the very best fracking is a cul-de-sac that we're wandering down and we're going to have to find our way out in 10, 15 years. At its worst, it's a complete disaster environmentally and for everyone around. When our democratic institutions have failed us and allowing fracking to go ahead, then the only recourse open to us is to go and intervene ourselves. The camp started in November. The, um, um, it started with a couple of tents. It's, it's grown since then. The 26th of November uh, 2003 was um, uh, the first sort of lorry uh, march in. And they congregated at the end of the road there, um, walk at a reasonable pace in front of the trucks, um, walk the mile or whatever it is, you know, so to the gate up there, just at a reasonable pace. Uh, we try and you know, uh, slow down the progress of these vans, these lorries and vans, um, and we basically do the same thing in the afternoon, and um, that takes up a matter of hours. The rest is basically keeping the camp uh, basically tidy. At first, it was a lot of people from outside the city, uh, but now people are joining from Earlham, Caddishead, Eccles, Salford generally. The camp's achieved loads of things. I mean, Dunnett's galvanised all the activists in the city and Manchester and Greater Manchester have all come together to oppose this. It's the grandmas, the mothers, fathers, disabled people, old people. We've got an 82-year-old woman called Anne who turns up every single day with a little flag, you know, and a walking stick. It's those sort of people. They, they're not interested in fighting with the police. at university and I've always had an interest in environmental issues. Um, I, I love this land and I love the people and I've, I've done research about America and Australia and I, I know what's happened there and I, I didn't want to stand by and watch it happen over here as well. I live local to the area, um, I visit regular, um, get down here most days, most evenings, weekends and uh, take part in whatever is necessary to try and stop this catastrophe that's happening a couple of hundred yards or so over there. We've been to places uh, such as uh, Salford Precinct and other precincts around the area um, distributing leaflets um, and basically uh, donations from the local community which have been overwhelming um, in, in their generosity. They've, they, they've delivered food stuff, they delivered clothing, they deliver um, uh, water on a regular basis. Everything that you need to run a camp, the local people and people from further afield, they, they return here um, and return again and again and again. And six she's obstructing the highway, she knows she's obstructing the highway. And if she continues, she will be arrested. She can either stand to the side or she'll be arrested. I'm a local resident of Manchester. I don't live on site. I, um, I, I come down to the site uh, and do the, uh, the lawful observing. Um, I film uh, interactions between the police and the protesters. Uh, a lot of my footage gets used by the, uh, the def defence solicitors, uh, Robert Lazars, uh, for the defence of like, you know, the, uh, the uh, protesters specifically. Greater Manchester Police in their public statements are uh, saying an awful lot of fine words about how they're stuck between two opposing sides, they're trying to be neutral, they're trying to facilitate public protest. And yet, when you look at the videos of people, of police doing what they're doing to people, you know, it's really serious violence. That's not people behaving neutrally, it's people attacking protesters, quite vindictively in some cases. There's got to be serious questions about the kind of institutional atmosphere within Greater Manchester Police and the particular briefings that are being given to these men repeatedly before they come down there because that totally doesn't tally with what Greater Manchester Police are saying in their public statements. There has been police brutality. The numbers have actually grown the next day. 
those people have been incredibly brave. They've um, delayed the the drilling process or the exploratory drilling process by well over a month, which is costing iGas a lot of money. And what they're trying to do basically is say there is a point where fracking will not be economically viable, and that's what they're trying to do. I, w I believe that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to uh, delay the process as long as possible, and also to draw attention to what will happen to virtually every single neighbourhood in the country. Thank you.